Hello again and welcome to Engineers Mindset Academy. So we have another question on numerical analysis. In this video, we are going to be talking about the bisection method approach to iteration, which is obviously numerical analysis. Now let's consider the question on the board. It says, use the bisection method to determine the drag coefficient C needed for the paracutist um, of mass M equals 68.1 kg to have a velocity of V equals 40 meters per second after a free falling for time T equals 10 seconds. Now we are giving initial guesses, use Xi to be equal to 12 and X naught to be equal to 16. I trade until the error falls below or equal to 0.8%. So we are giving the paracutist equation, let's get it out. We have that F of C is equal to gm all over c multiplied by 1 minus exponential minus c all over m multiplied by t all minus v all right so using the bisection approach normally we're actually supposed to select two values by ourselves we'll be given an equation and then we'll consider two values then when we put in these values into the equation one of the values should be on the positive while one should be on the negative in this case we were already given the initial guesses x1 or xi which is initial to be what 12 and then x0 to be what um, 16. all right so usually when we select these initial values we have to once we obtain the one on the positive and one on negative after substituting into the given equation then we can now find what is called the middle of this equation simply called as okay we can simply find x in this case they are using c as the function so we can simply find um, the midpoint of c or call the c1 and that is simply equal to um, x i plus x naught since this is what they use in the question all over two we are x i lies or is the value or the particular root that lies on what the negative side would give us a negative value why x naught is the particular root that lies on the positive side or which gives us a positive value okay so this is now what we are going to use to solve so these are the initial guesses one of these must be on the positive negative the first one is always a negative and the second one is always on the positive so given the initial guesses we have x i to be equal to 12 and we have x naught to be equal to 16 from the question we have it here 12 and 16 so we have to first of all confirm that one of these is positive in this function and one of this is negative in this function before we can start our iteration it must always be one on the negative and one on the positive before we can start the iteration so let's test now we now consider when x is equal to 12 we we'll simply put the value here all right so they used x here but then when c because the function here now is c so when c is equal to what 12 which is the first variable or first guess x i equal to 12 we now have f into wherever you see c in this equation simply putting the var var value as what 12 so in place of fc becomes f 12 this is now equal to the value of g is a constant gravity which is 9.81 okay 9.81 times the mass was given to us in the question mass was given as um, m is 68.1 so multiplied by 68.1 all over c again and c we are using the variable as 12, as 12 okay all over 12 into 1 minus exponential okay let me take this off. All right, so one minus exponential minus, okay. Now we said C is 12. So you have 12 all over M. M remains 68.1, okay, multiplied by T. And the time T was given to us in the question as 10 seconds, okay, free fall. Free falling for time t equals 10 seconds, so simply multiply by 10, okay, minus v, 
and v was giving the equation as well um 40 meters per second that's the velocity v is 40 so simply minus 40. so f of 12 is now equal to let's compute everything here 9.81 multiply 68.1 divided by 12. 9.81 multiply 68.1 divided by 12. we have 56.67 into 1 minus exponential take note i have 12 divided 68.1 multiplied by 10. so 12 divided 68.1 12 divided 68.1 multiplied by 10. That gives me, now remember there's a negative sign here. Okay, so that's minus 1.76. Okay, minus 4c. All right, so f of 12 is now equal to 56.67 into 1 minus. So all we need to do now is compute exponential minus 1.76 from your calculator. Okay, you compute exponential minus 1.76. Okay, so exponential minus 1.76 give us 0 0.1720. Okay, minus 40. So this is equal to 56.67 into 1 minus of 0 0.1720. 20. That gives us 0 0.828 minus 40 so we simply evaluate 56.67 multiply 0 0.828 okay f of 12 is now equal to okay multiply by multiplied 56.67 all right so we have 46.92 minus okay so we'll put down our minus 40 minus 40 which is actually 6.92 and this value is greater than zero so which is which means that of course x is positive okay when c is equal to or when x is equal to 12 the variable f of 12 is actually positive therefore f of 12 lies on the positive side and it is greater than zero so it is simply what positive next up we test when x is equal to 16 okay that's when c is equal to 16 when c equals 16 okay so we'll find f of 16 so go back into the original equation which is this in place of c wherever you see c now you plug in the value as 16 instead of 12 okay so this simply gives us f of 16 to be equal to we have gm g is 9.81 m is 68.1 so we have 9.81 multiply 68.1 all over c c is now 16 into 1 minus exponential minus c now is 16 all over m which is 90 which is 68.1 multiply by t and t is 10 okay minus v v remains 40 so all we do now is changing or testing when x is 16 to see if this must be on negative side. Like I told you, you have two variables such that, or two values such that when you substitute into the function, one must lie on the positive, one must lie on negative before that becomes the root of the equation. That's where we can now solve it. All right. So f of 16 is now equal to 9.81 multiply 68.1 divided by 16. 9.81 multiply 68.1 divide 16 that gives us 41.75 okay into 1 minus so we'll compute now exponential minus we now compute 16 divide 68.1 multiplies by 10 16 divide 68.1 multiply by 10 okay so that's minus 2 Point three minus two point three five okay minus you put down your forty all right so f of sixteen 
is now equal to 41.75 into 1 minus so we compute from our calculator now exponential minus 2.35 and see what we are going to obtain all right so exponential minus 2.35 that gives us 0 0.095 okay so you put down your minus 40 so f of 16 is now equal to 41.75 into so we simply compute 1 minus 0 0.095 okay 1 minus 0 0.095 which gives us 0 0.905 0 0.905 you put down your minus 40 so we'll simply evaluate now 41.75 multiplies 0 0.905 multiplies 41.75 all right so f of 16 is now equal to we have 37.78 minus 40 okay and this is equal to 37.78 minus 40 minus 2.22 so which in this case now is less than zero okay so notice now that when we put in the first value as 12 we obtain f of 12 to be what greater than zero which lies on the positive side now we we'll put in the second guess which is 16 and we obtained f of 16 to be minus 2.22 which is less than zero so it means that um, 16 and 12 are what our actually truth that we can use to what carry on our iteration so we cannot use that um, two guesses and remember from what i said earlier we have to now find a function c1 which lies on what the negative side which is xi plus the positive side which is x naught divided by 2 this becomes the next root in which we used to iterate. So we simply compute what this root. Okay, so we can do that over here. So keeping in mind of the equation, we'll continue using this equation till we are done with our iteration. So I'm going to leave this equation down here. Let's find the next root. All right, guys, so I'm keeping the original equation because we are going to be making use of this equation as we go further in the iteration not also forgetting the equation says you iterate to the value or the error falls below or is equal to 0 0.8 percent so we have to now carry our iteration now before we proceed we have to find what the first iteration value okay so for first iteration okay for first iteration from the bisection method you find a function c1 since this function is with respect to c then you find a function c1 which lies between the two values that give us positive and negative we have xi plus x naught all over 2 this is now equal to xi was given as 12 plus x naught was given as 16 all over 2 therefore c1 is equal to um, 12 plus 16 is obviously 28 divide by 2 which implies that c1 is equal to 14. now after obtaining this you have to now carry out the first iteration it becomes f of c1 which is the first iteration for the given function so wherever you see c now in this equation now you put in the value as what 14 and see if you are going to get a positive or a negative value if you get a positive value then you look above the other iteration we've done when we put in the values of the um, given guesses into the function if you get negative here you compare with one that has positive and then take that particular root and find the next iteration okay let's go on then um, you understand what that means so this becomes f of c1 equal to we have here g the value of g is constant 9.81 multiplies m was given in the question simply as 68.1 all over c now becomes c1 and c1 is 14 it becomes all over 14 all into 1 minus exponential remember c all over m so minus you put down your minus c is now c1 which is 14 you have 14 all over m and m remains the mass which is 
68.1 multiplied by t t was given the equation as 10 so multiply simply by 10 minus 40 which is minus v v was also given as 40 so let's evaluate this now and see f of c1 which is the first iteration is now equal to so we simply compute 9.81 multiply 68.1 divided by 14 this gives us 47.72 okay 47.72 into 1 minus exponential not forgetting there is a minus sign there so it becomes exponential minus next up we compute 14 divided by 68.1 multiplied by 10 okay so 14 divide 68.1 multiplies by 10 so we have that gives us 2.06 okay all minus 40 all right so f of c1 is now equal to 47.72 okay multiplied by 1 minus so we simply compute exponential minus 2.06 from our calculator we compute that value and see what we obtain exponential minus 2.06 that value gives us 0 0.1275 okay all minus 40 all minus 40 so f of c1 is now equal to 47.72 into 1 minus 0 0.1275 1 minus 0 0.1275 that gives us 0 0.8725 minus 40 okay f of c1 is now equal to 47.72 multiply 0 0.828725 that gives us 41.65 not forgetting minus 40 okay so this simply means that 41.65 minus 40 will give us um, 1.65 which is greater than 0 so it means that f of c1 is greater than what 0 since it is positive it's greater than 0 and it lies on the positive side therefore to find the root to do the next iteration second iteration okay second iteration to find the root to do the next iteration you form c2 remember c2 must be between what two values or two roots which actually one lies on the positive and one lies on the negative when we use c1 as 14 when we obtain c1 as 14 we had this function to give us what a positive value so we have to look the previous iteration we've done when we put in the values as 12 and 16 which one gave us negative because it must always be between negative and positive and when we looked previously we saw that when value of c was 16 we obtained the value as what negative the function gave us what a negative function which is less than zero therefore we have to now combine these two functions to obtain what the second root which we use to carry out our second iteration it's as simple as that it must always be between a positive and a negative root okay so f16 gave us what negative less than zero so we're simply picking the value of 16. 16 becomes the first value always the first is negative plus the one that gave us the function to be positive in the iteration which is now what 14 when c1 equals 14 so it becomes 16 plus 14 all over 2. 16 plus 14 of course is 30 divided by 2 gives us this implies that c2 is equal to what 15. so we now substitute this variable for c2 into the function and i create and see if we are still going to obtain what 
see if we're still going to obtain a positive or a negative value but keep it in mind at some point you have to test they say i trade until percentage error falls below 0.8 percent so at some point you are, you have to test for what percentage error so i said that when you are trading at least i trade up to three times sorry before you can um, check your percentage error so let's try this out now and see so we simply find f of c2 and this is now equal to the function remains the same g is 9.81 constant 9.81 multiply 68.1 all over c now becomes c2 and c2 now is 15 all over 15 into 1 minus exponential minus the equation says c all over m c now remains c2 and c2 is 15 it becomes 15 all over m is 68 which is the mass 0.1 multiplied by t not forgetting times t and t is 10 so multiplied by 10 close your bracket all minus v and v remains 40 from the question so this is equal to we simply compute 9.81 multiplied 68.1 divided by 15 that gives us 44.54 into i have here one minus exponential not forgetting there's a minus sign there so we simply compute 15 divided 68.1 multiplied by 10 that gives us 2.20 okay all close remember all minus 40. so this is equal to 44 44.54 multiplied by 1 minus so we simply compute from our calculator now exponential minus 2.20 okay that gives us okay exponential minus 2.20 gives us 0 0.1108 okay minus 40 all right so we will now calculate 44.5 okay into first of all we evaluate 1 minus 0 0.1108 all right so f of c2 is now equal to we have here 44.54 44.54 into so we simply compute 1 minus 0 0.1108 that gives us 0 0.0892 not forgetting minus 40 so 0 0.0892 multiplies 44.54 multiplies 44.54 that gives us 39.60 remember minus 40 okay so this simply implies that f of two f of c2 is equal to 39.60 minus 40 that simply gives us minus 0 0.4 and of course minus 0 0.4 is negative and it's also less than zero so it means this is negative okay so when we considered c2 as 15 and we solved we obtained the value as what negative the value of the function after iteration gave us negative so we need to look back our previous iteration which one gave us positive we combine that function and this other function to what find the third root for iteration when we use c2 as 15 we obtain negative so we we'll look back previously when we use c1 as 16 when we use c1 we obtain the value as what positive when we use c2 we obtain the value as negative remember c2 is actually 15 and c1 actually gave us what 14 so which means we have positive and we have negative when we use c1 we have positive but when we use c2 we obtain the value as negative so you must always compare positive and negative before you iterate you must always compare positive and negative before you iterate so what would be for second iteration c2 we obtain a negative value so we have to look behind the previous iteration which one or recent previous iteration that give us a negative um, a positive value so that we can compare the both of them together and we look behind c1 gave us the function to be what positive and c1 itself was what 14 so we have to now combine 14 and 16 to obtain what the third 
um, um, root to actually iterate with. Okay, so we combine that two now. Okay, so for third iteration, for third iteration, therefore your C3 becomes what? Remember, one was the negative and one was the positive. We obtain C2 to be what? Negative, and the value of C2 is simply equal to 15 here. So you have 15, negative side, plus you look behind now for the previous iteration, the most recent previous iteration, which one lies on the positive? It has to be negative and positive. C1 gave us positive, and the value of C1 is simply what? 14. So to obtain the third root, it becomes 15 plus 14 all over 2. And of course, this implies that C3 is equal to 15 plus 14 is 29. 29 divided by 2. That gives us 14.5. So this is now the new function which we are going to use to iterate. Therefore, you find f of c3, which means wherever you see c3 in the function, put in the value as 14.5, then you iterate. The function remains gm all over c. C now becomes c3, and g is 9.81 constants. M was given as 68.1. All over C becomes C3, which is 14.5. Okay, into 1 minus exponential minus not forgetting C all over M. And C now is 14.5 all over M was given as simply 68.1. Remember, multiply by T. T was also given the equation as 10. Okay, there is T here, so multiply by T all minus V. Okay, all minus V and V remains 40. So you simply have this. So F of C3, you may wish to use F of 14.5 instead of C3, but I'm just using C3 to make it easier. Okay, this is now equal to, let's now compute 9.81 multiply 68.1 divides 14.5. That gives us 45. 0 0.07 okay into 1 minus exponential next up we comp compute 14.5 divide 68.1 multiply by 10 okay remember this is exponential minus so let's compute that value 14.5 divide 68.1 times 10 that simply gives us 2.13 okay all minus 40 so this is equal to 45.07 into 1 minus. So we we'll compute exponential minus 2.13 from our calculator. Exponential minus 2.13. That gives us 0 0.1188 minus 40. <coughs> so this is equal to 45.07 into, so let's compute 1 minus 0 0.1188. That gives us 0 0.8812. Not forgetting, minus 40. Okay, this is now equal to, let's compute 45.07 multiplied 0 0.8812. So multiply 45.07. So we simply have 39.71 minus 40. And of course, 39.71 minus 40. That gives us minus 0 0.29. And this is actually less than 0, which is which lies on the negative side okay this is less than zero and it lies on the negative side so this simply means that fc3 fc of 3 is less than zero and is also what negative so for us to continue iterating we have to look over what the recent previous iteration which one lies on the positive they will combine it with this to what carry out the fourth iteration all right guys so notice now that f of c3 also gave us negative which is less than zero. 
So we have to look back, of course, look back, um, look backwards and look for the recent or previous recent iteration that we've done, the one that gives us positive, because it must always fall between the negative and the positive. You find the next root from there. So the root here, C3, has given us this function to be negative. If we look back, the only function that gave us positive was when we have FC1, which gave us what positive. And FC1, C1, uh, we obtain C1 value to simply be what? Um, 14. Not forgetting, C1 was given as 14. Sorry, I wiped it off. But you can look down the video, of course. C1 was given as 14. When it is 14, we obtain positive. So we are still going to now combine C3 and C1 to find the fourth root for us to do our fourth iteration. So for the fourth iteration, okay, for the fourth iteration, for the fourth iteration, the root becomes that C, C4 now is simply equal to, we have to now combine C1, we have to now combine C3 plus plus C C1 all over 2 because C3 lies on the negative. C3 gave us this function to be negative and the value of C3, we obtain the value of C3 to be equal to 14.5. So you simply pick it out, 14.5. This is now equal to 14.5 plus the one that gave us positive remains C1 and C1 value is 14. Okay, plus 14 all over 2. So which means we are simply going to use this for our fourth iteration. C4 is now equal to 14.5 plus 14 divided by 2. Alright, so that gives us 14.25. Okay, so we simply find F of C4, which is F of 14.25. So wherever you see C now, putting the value as 14.25, Remember, G is constant, 9.81 multiplied by M is also constant, 68.1 all over C becomes now C4, which is 14.25, okay, multiplied by 1 minus exponential minus, not forgetting C, C becomes C4 now, which is 14.25 all over M, M is constant, it was given as 68.1, Okay, multiplied by t, t remains 10, all minus 40. So I think I'm going to do all of this now. This is now equal to, okay, so that gives us 46.88 into 1 minus exponential, not forgetting there's a minus sign there. Next, we'll compute 14.25 divided 68.1 multiplied by 10. That, be, that is us 2.09, okay, minus 40. This is equal to 46.88 into 1 minus, take note, we find now from calculator exponential minus 2.09, exponential minus 2.09, that gives us 0 0.1237 minus 40. Okay, so f of c4, I'm going to do everything at once here. 46.88 multiplies 1 minus 0 0.1237 minus 40. I'll do everything at once. Alright, so this gives us 1.09, which is greater than 0 and lies on the positive axis. Okay, so when we did the first iteration, we obtain um, our function to lie on the positive axis when we use the root for C4 as 14.25, okay? All right, guys, so notice that on substitution of C4 as 14.25, we obtain our first iteration to be what? Positive. So we look behind the previous iteration. It has to be positive and negative. Which of the previous or recent previous iteration gave us a negative value? f of c3 was negative and less than zero the value of c3 of course we obtain the value of c3 as 14.5 so we combine negative and positive so we combine the roots 14.5 and of course the root 14.25 which gave us a positive value for the function for the fifth iteration 
So we'll carry out fifth iteration. And for the fifth iteration, we compute C5, which is now equal to, now we are simply going to combine C3, which was on the negative side, plus C4, which now gives us positive all over 2. C3 was 14.5, plus C4 was 14.25, um, divided by 2. So this implies that we are using this function C5 for our fifth iteration. So 14.5 plus 14.25 divided by 2 so that gives us 14.375 so this becomes value for our fifth iteration that's the root for the fifth iteration therefore fc of 5 which means wherever you see c in this given equation now you put in the value as 14.5 this is now equal to remember g is a constant 9.81 we have 9.81 multiplies m was given as 68.1 all over c c now is what c5 which is 14.375 all into 1 minus exponential not forgetting minus c over m c remains 14.5 so we have 14 point sorry 14.375 all over m is 68 Point one. Remember, multiply by t, and t is 10, all minus v, v is 40. Okay, so this is equal to, let's evaluate this, 9.81 multiply 68.1, divides 14.375. That gives us 55.28, all into 1 minus exponential, minus now. Let's compute 14.375, divide 68.1, multiply by 10. We have 2.11, okay, minus 40, which is here. All right, so this is equal to 55.28 all into 1 minus, so we compute exponential minus 2.11 from the calculator. That gives us 0 0.1212 minus 40 minus 40 okay so i'm going to compute everything at once to obtain fc of 5 this is now equal to that gives us 8.59 and this is positive and it's greater than zero so greater than zero and it lies on the positive so we've been doing this iteration so i've not really checked the percentage error simply because um, I've done it in between and it's not falling. The video is already getting too long. So um, let's test now with fifth values and see if we are going to obtain the value to be less than, according to the condition, percentage error should be less than or equal to 0.8%. So let's try with the fifth um, um, iteration here. So the percentage error now is now simply equal to the current iteration minus the previous iteration. So current is C5 okay minus previous is c4 all over the current c5 multiplied by 100 percent okay and this is equal to c5 was we obtain c5 to be 14.375 we have 14.375 minus c4 and c4 was obtained as 14.25 we obtain c4 as 14.25 so minus 14.25 all over the current 14.375 multiply the whole of this variable by 100 percent let's see if this error uh, percentage error will be less than 0 0.0 um, 0 0.8 percent so i'll compute all of this at once let's see what we are going to have 14.375 minus 14.25 divides 14.375 times 100 that simply gave us 0 0.06 0 0.07 percent that gave us 0 0.07 percent which falls below or is less than 0 0.8 percent so we can actually stop our iteration here 
all right so if you're wondering why i didn't check the previous percentages of course i've been doing it in my calculator so you can always check it's always the current um the current um, root minus the previous root all over the current root multiplied by 100 so you can always have c4 minus c3 divided by c4 or c3 minus c2 divided by c3 and so on but i've done that with my calculator and it's not converging or it's not less than 0.8 percent so that's why i have to iterate up to five times to be able to obtain this percentage error so this condition has been met or satisfied it means we can stop our iteration here all right guys so that's it on bisection method um, of numerical analysis in the next video of course i will do more problems on bisection method on numerical analysis please if you're new to the channel do well to like comment and of course share this um, channel this information to your friends and of course subscribe to my channel in the next video i will see you with more questions on numerical analysis thanks and cheers